Welcome back to Rupp Arena, where Kentucky, 19 and 6, ranked eighth in the nation in one poll, ninth in the other, meets South Carolina with a record of 7 and 16. Let's take a look at our just for feet starting lineups. First, for the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Gallman, a good defender, averaging 10 points over the last seven games. Johnson is the SEC's ninth leading rebounder. Mackey, second in the league in scoring, South Carolina's all-time leader, 2,027 points. Lucas, a freshman, had 21 against Ole Miss earlier this season. And Nick's a senior, starting for the fifth time this season. The Kentucky starting lineup will read this way, starting with the forward Scott Padgett, 37th on the UK scoring chart, 1,077 points. Evans out of his slump, double figures each of the last six games. Bradley, SEC field goal percentage leader, second in the nation, 67.7% on pace for the all-time Kentucky record. Turner playing his 140th game, that's nine short of the all-time college basketball record. He has 1,031 points and he's the Kentucky uh, career steals leader. And Allison, the freshman, starting the sixth game of his first college season. Kentucky Wildcats try to break that two-game losing streak against South Carolina. Back with the opening tip in just a moment. Of all the stories you've come to know, the most important by far is your own. With no other story, you care so much about how it turns out. Are you just waiting to see, or are you writing it the way you want it to go? At Jefferson Pilot Financial, we're doing more than providing financial services. We're helping you write the story of your life. Crystal Clear Amico Ultimate. You expect more from a leader, and you get it. If you ask me, Clay Espy's the best lawyer in town. Of course, with all the depositions he has to take, Arms up. I noticed he wasn't in town much. I'm sorry, the can stays with me. So I told Clay Bell South could help him avoid all that traveling if he video conferenced his depositions. A suggestion which saved his company so much time and money, they sent him on an all-expense paid trip to Hawaii. Hey, Bob. Hey, Clay. Arms up. Meet me where it always feels like summertime The swing on Wilson's Pond or old Mahoney sign The good times that you're craving are just around the bend It's time for a meal Meet me at the Dairy Queen Where the feeling never ends Meet me at DQ Come in and get a chicken strip basket with fries and Texas toast It's only $3.49 Come on to that feeling and meet me at DQ over 23,000 at Rupp Arena for today's Kentucky-South Carolina game. And just a few moments ago, two former Wildcats were honored. The first, Bob Burrow, who played two years at Kentucky, 55 and 56, averaging a double-double. All-American holds the record with 34 rebounds in one game against Temple in 1955. And the other one to be honored, a member of the 1978 NCAA championship team, Rick Roby, who wore number 30, or wore number 53 as part of the Twin Towers for the Wildcats. 1,395 points, 838 uh, rebounds in his career. And uh, they are one of 36, two of 36, that have been so honored with having their jerseys retired and banners hosted to the rafters here at Rupp Arena. Kentucky with a big lead in the series, 21 to four over South Carolina. As we said, uh, they had a 19 point lead at one time in the first meeting this season at Columbia, wound up winning by only seven. Tubby Smith and Eddie Fogler squaring off today. There's Fogler, who is in his sixth year at South Carolina, in his 13th year overall, also coached at Wichita, and you'll remember when he was at Vandy and won the SEC championship in 93. And Tubby Smith, seven and two all time against South Carolina. He, of course, has been the head coach at Tulsa and Georgia as well as Kentucky, where he took over last season and did something very few coaches have ever done, win a national championship in their first season on the bench. Bradley controls the opening tap with John Clockerty, Tom Lopes, and Mike Stewart, today's officials. South Carolina opens up in a straight man-to-man -man defense. No, it looks like they got a box and chase or a little zone. 
Wayne Tuner, Turner's outside shot, and then an offensive rebound by Scott Padgett, who just took one hand and <laughs> threw Gallman down to the floor. Gallman had a hold of his arm. He says, let go of me. <laughs> Second chance opportunity for the Wildcats. Evans off a screen from 17. Bounces off. And Carolina has it. One of the things that Kentucky has struggled with this year has been their three-point shooting. Everyone knows about that. It's interesting how you can be tied for first place in the conference in overall field goal percentage shooting and be last in your conference in three-point shooting. That's pretty amazing. I can't ever remember that. Tied for first overall, but last from behind the arc. Kentucky uh, shooting 30.8% from three-point range. And when they lose, that's been one of their problems, hasn't it? Absolutely. And they're only shooting 16% in the six games that they have played, and that's from beyond the arc. That's terrible shooting. Lucas misses a driving shot. Padgett for three. On the floor to Knicks of South Carolina. Now B.J. Mackey into front court. Being guarded by the freshman Allison. Good luck. Out of bounds. Off Mackey's knee. So Allison with a reach in there caused the turnover. Good play by the freshman. Got his hand in there. And Mackey, one of the better ball handlers in the Southeastern Conference, pushing it deep inside, trying to get there. And Allison just slapped it right off of his kneecap. So uh, first set to Allison. Nice pass inside. Padgett, a uh, tremendous passing big man out on the floor, finds Evans, who can't get it down, but will shoot two after Johnson committed the first foul of the game. Tom, one of the things I've always liked about Hishimu Evans' game is the fact that he can play inside and outside. And when he's inside at 6'5", 6'6", he posts up a lot of bigger players, even though he may be smaller than the guy he's going up against. You can see having a pretty good year. You mentioned those six games. He's been in double figures in the conference the last six games. And he really has been probably the best player they've had the last six games. And that was after he had gone seven while scoring in single digits in the midst of that slump that he finally broke out of in conference play. Hits one of two at the stripe, first point of the game. He's really been one of their better free throw shooters, too. 81% on the season. Full court pressure from the Wildcats, something they've not done too much of, and perhaps going back to it, to get out of the slump. Look at this matchup with Padgett out front with Lucas. Lucas has a quickness advantage there. Kicks it back outside. Knicks can't get the shot away, though. Now Gallman with a screen for him. Shot clock at 10. Mackey gets by Allison. His pull-up short on the floor. And Kentucky comes away with it. Here's Allison. Turner guarded by Lucas. Inside Bradley, sandwiched, fouled by Johnson. That'll be number two on Bud Johnson. Actually, I think Michael Bradley might have been a little bit fortunate at that time. He looked like he was a little off balance as he was making the move toward the basket. Watch again as Turner drops it inside. He's moving that way. Got a little bit of help from Mackey on a push in the middle of the back, and foul came from the other side. So Bud Johnson quickly uh, picks up two fouls. We have played uh, two minutes plus and do not have a field goal in the game either side. Well, here's where Michael Bradley really struggles. For a guy who's number two in the nation in field goal percentage shooting, he's woeful at that charity strike. 33 is Damian Kinlock, 6'7", freshman from Charleston, replacing Johnson. Bradley, a 46% free throw shooter, hits the second. And of course, he's a little closer when he shoots his field goals. <laughs> like yeah. about, uh, yeah, but you got somebody on you, too. Feet, about 13 feet. <laughs> Mackey thought about the three. Turner's checking him now. Turner nearly made the interception. Nicks, the open man, launches a three, not there. Evans out on the break. Three on three. Padgett fakes the pass, finds Allison. Crowd wanted him to take the shot. That's one thing that uh, Scott has been, it seems to me, a little gun shy lately. Bradley missed a close one, tapped in by Padgett. Padgett on the point of the press now. He's out there trying to grab something and watch Mackey go by Turner. Double teamed, got rid of it to Kinlock. Nick's looking inside. Kentucky in a man-to-man -man defense. Gallman sets a screen and was open, but Nick's elected to keep dribbling, and Turner nearly took it away from him. Another miss, this one by Kinlock, and Kentucky has it. Allison on the run out to Bradley, and he's fouled. Kinlock with his first foul. 
Scott Padgett, one of the better rebounders, not only passing outside, but also getting work done on the inside. Bradley with a turnaround missing. Look at the follow by Padgett off of the glass. And of course, the defensive work by Kentucky ends up getting one on the other end as you see Bradley getting fouled on a nice pass by Allison. Almost like he had eyes in the back of his head knowing that Bradley was there. There you see the uh, numbers on Bradley, so good on the left and so poor on the right. Left being field goal percentage and right being free throw percentage. Antonio Grant has been bothered by a foot injury just now getting back into playing shape. Played a good number of minutes against Arkansas on Wednesday night. Bradley misses both free throws. So Kentucky is now one of six at the free throw line. Excuse me, that's not right. They're one of five from the floor, and Carolina's 0 for 4. Allison. Did he foul Mackey, or was yeah, he Yeah, it looked like he might have pushed him as Mackey went through there. I think he did. Well, this is on Allison. That'll be his first in the team. Jamal McGlore in for Kentucky, replacing Bradley. South Carolina. You know, Tom, I'm sitting here watching Bradley make those or miss those free throws, and he has excellent form on his shot. I mean, he really bends his legs. He does everything properly. The ball just does not go through that net. It's got to be frustrating for him. I mean, you know he's been working on it in practice, probably shoots 200 a day. Slow start for both teams here. Herbert Lee Davis into the game for South Carolina, replacing Aaron Lucas. And they have gone nearly four minutes without a point. Turner trying to keep Mackey out of penetration into that middle area. Got a screen, passed up a three. Instead, Grant will try the three. No good. Padgett clears the rebound. South Carolina is the worst rebounding team in the SEC, and they're being soundly whipped here in the early going. Turner from 15. Nice floater. Found an opening and went right through it. We have a timeout. On the and there's a timeout at the 15-50 mark of the first half. Kentucky pitching a shutout. Wayne Turner gets the field goal, and Kentucky leads South Carolina 6-0. After months of anticipation, the big day has finally arrived. Mr. Johnson, huh? it's a Nike. Say hello to Just for Feet's new arrivals like the Nike Air Holistic Uptempo. It's an Asics. The new Gel Kayano running shoe. You've got an Adidas. The new Response, ready for you to take home. Twin. Meet the New Balance 888's men's and women's cross trainers. The new shoes are here. This week at Just for Feet, where the 13th pair is free. Driving past Kroger, what's in the air? The smell of fresh bread, bacon right over there. At four, five, six, and seven o'clock, the bread at Kroger Deli is piping hot. Kroger Deli's baking up hot bread, hot bread. Kroger Deli's baking up fresh hot bread. Do 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 Fresh from the deli, you can count on us. Dad, I got straight A pluses! <laughs> it's report card day again. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance gets a report card from the AM Best Company. They've been rating insurance firms since 1906. The highest ratings go to those who are able to be there for their customers in good times or bad. We consistently get the highest rating A++. Where's your report card, Justin? Taz ate it. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance. All around coverage, all around Kentucky. When you need paint or ladders, come out to 3819 Dixie Highway and step up to Higdon's Paint and Ladder. The ladder people in Kentuckiana. Sputtering start to this one. Kentucky leads South Carolina 6-0 with 1550 left in the half. Meanwhile, over in Fayetteville, Arkansas, the Razorbacks and Mississippi State in a key game for that second seed in the West. And Mississippi State off to a good start, leading the Hogs 7-2. B.J. Mackey and the Gamecocks are 0 for 5 overall shooting to open the game. And you see Kentucky 2 of 6. Wildcats are also 2 of 6 at the free throw line. Mackey almost ran off and left that ball. South Carolina's in trouble. There's the 10 seconds. Good defensive work that time with the press. South Carolina guilty of a little inattention to taking care of the basketball, and Eddie Fogler shouting the instructions to his club about how to handle it. Second turnover by South Carolina. Kentucky's also winning the rebounding battle decisively, 7-3. Zone defense by the Gamecocks. 
It's like a 2-3. They use a point out there. You see Mackey float along that uh, free throw line. McGlure's jump hook is a beauty. Jamal McGlure's first bucket. Tom, South Carolina really has no size in there right now. Gallman, the biggest player, 6'7", trying to contest McGlure. But Johnson, remember, picked up two fouls in the first minute or so of play. Down to the low post, quick double team from Allison. And they have to pitch it out of there. And then Mackey fumbled it. Padgett tries to save it, knocks Mackey to the floor. Three on one break, and Padgett with a finish from Turner. Good work. Good two man basketball on the break that time. I wasn't sure what Padgett was going to do with the ball when he got there. Made the right decision. Here's that trap again by Kentucky. Padgett got another hand on it. Watch Jamal McGlure again getting the ball down inside against a much smaller South Carolina club. Kenlock and Goldman not able to keep up with the 6'11 player inside. I'm not sure what happened there as the uh, a a delay of game warning against Kentucky. Uh, the defender, Padgett, stepped over the uh, baseline. Well, Kentucky doing a nice job with this press. South Carolina not handling it well at all. Davis into front court for the Gamecocks. Pull up shot by uh, Lucas is short. Offensive rebound by Davis and a pushing foul called on McGlure of Kentucky. I would say the right call. McGlure tried to dive for the ball and he actually came up and almost clipped the South Carolina player. Watch underneath. Missed from the corner and you'll see McGlure fly right in here to try to pick the ball up. Lucas gets it to Davis who pitches inside to Grant and he scores South Carolina's first field goal at the 14-34 mark. South Carolina keeps changing defenses. We might have a hold right here. It's on Gallman. William Gallman, the 6'7 senior from Chester, foul number one. Well, finally the Gamecocks decided to get off of that 0-0. Got one down the inside. Nice little turn in there, and Grant gets the first basket for South Carolina. It was a struggle. It was. Ryan Hogan has replaced Desmond Allison for Kentucky. Mackey took it away from Padgett, who then is called with a push, trying to get it back. Mackey slipped in, picked Padgett's pocket, and Scott with his first foul. Yeah, we talk so much about Mackey's ability offensively, his assists, his scoring. This guy's a pretty good defensive player, too. He's got good hands. You can see right there, he slapped the ball away from Padgett, and Padgett reached out and grabbed him before he could get down for the layup. Probably a pretty good move by Padgett, because he had a wide open field. Yeah, he did. Mackey uh, lost his balance with the push, but then uh, recovered and was headed for a wide open shot. Here's Hogan being called for a quick Kentucky foul. And four against the Wildcats now, the first on Hogan. <laughs> who goes to Tubby Smith and says, no, no, he had my arm. He sits down as he says that, and Tayshawn Prince takes his place. So Hogan commits the foul and immediately goes out of the game. Gallman shoots over Pageant, rebounded by Prince. One of the things they worked on this week was making sure that Turner had his hands on the ball most of the time. As he did there, and he scores the runner in the lane, his fourth point, and Kentucky up again by 10. Numbers here for Carolina. Nice reverse. How about the move by Aaron Lucas to get the ball down the floor? He was trapped down on the Kentucky end of it, pushed it up there and got it to Mackey. Mackey saw McGlure lurking there, one of the best shot blockers in the league, so he reversed it, used the rim to protect the ball and scored. And then Prince sails it over Evans' head for a Kentucky turnover. Watch again the push by Kentucky now. The thing I like about Wayne Turner, I think he ought to be controlling the basketball most of the time. This guy usually makes the right decision. He's a senior, should know what he's doing as we go back and look at the other end, and B.J. Mackey looking right there and floating to the other side to lay it up off of the glass. Good move. South Carolina handling the Kentucky pressure better the past couple of possessions. Lucas worked his way to the rim but couldn't finish it. Knocked out of bounds off a Kentucky player. And South Carolina gets it back. Jules Camaro into the game for the Wildcats. That'll be a disappointing year, obviously, for Eddie Fogler. He came into this year thinking he was going to be awfully good. I, th I think that losing Stack and Watson had more of an effect on this club than they thought it was going to. Then, of course, uh, LaRon Williams was sort of a distraction and finally dismissed from the team and had been the second leading scorer. And apparently was a, a big distraction and uh, ended his career early. Mackey launches a long three, no good. Kinlock with a follow. 
didn't move. He got it up over Evans. Evans took the bait. He gave him a little pump fake. He went up in the air and Kinlock gets an easy one underneath. South Carolina within six. Kentucky seniors have scored nine of their 12 points thus far. Prince with the entry pass to McGlure. But Johnson back into the game with two fouls. Gives him more size inside. But Turner with a three. And that's a rare thing. I think that's only his third three-pointer of the season. He's shooting uh, just under 10% from three-point range. And he nailed that three. He's off to a great start with seven points. He's now three for 22. I want you to watch the form on this shot. He is so off balance, he almost leans to the right. Well, you can't see it because we're blocked out, but we had a great look, a great view from where we were. He doesn't go straight up with his shot. He almost looks like he's listing to the right when right. he shoots. Ashimo Evans picks up the foul and exits the game. Kentucky, as you see, up 15 to six. Allison back in, replacing Evans. Saul Smith makes his first appearance in the lineup. Tubby Smith continues to use that 10-man rotation, using a lot of people, playing a lot of minutes. Lucas can't get away from Smith. South Carolina having difficulty penetrating into that defense. Shot clock at eight. Mackey, double teamed quickly by McGlore. Pass to an open Lucas way downtown. Missed that one. Air ball. It'll go Kentucky's way. Lucas was out of his range then beyond the NBA arc. It's been all Kentucky in the early going. People think the internet is a space-age jumble of microscopic doohickeys. Doohickeys? That's technical. Yeah, well, I'm trying, okay. In reality, the internet is a bunch of phone lines that we... I... I she uh, maintains under here. I keep BellSouth lines reliable. Which makes BellSouth.net reliable for you, me, and everybody else. That sounds like somebody paid you to say that. Well, they did a little bit. You know, they also think I know how to install phone lines. <laughs> you don't? No, not really. Get out of the hole. What? Up, up, come on, let's go. Come on, there you go. No, what? Let's go, kiddo, come on. What happened? Everywhere I go now, I get treated like a star. Well, not everywhere. <laughs> Actually, just at Arby's. I mean, take this five-book value roundup. Oh, and talk about power. Talk about respect. Hey, I get to choose three beef and cheddars, or four regular roast beefs, or five barbecues for five bucks. I mean, five bucks, that's nothing. I made twice that my last picture. You can go anywhere and get filled up, but you can only get the five-buck value roundup at Arby's. Eight minutes played at Rupp Arena and Kentucky leading South Carolina 15 to six. In tournament time right on the horizon and the SEC postseason tournament will be March 4th through the 7th at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. And for ticket information, you can call 1-800-994-SEC-1. So it's my responsibility to find all the restaurants, is That's that right? right? Atlanta's your place. All right. Tubby Smith hoping his Wildcats will be the Number one seed from the SEC East. Right now they have a one-game lead on Tennessee. The ball is playing Vanderbilt today. Auburn can clinch the West today if they beat Alabama. And they had a big lead, didn't they? Big lead, yes. Allison penetrates, finds Smith. Prince inside to Kamara. Kentucky moving the ball rapidly around, unable to get a shot, though. Now Prince for three. Long rebound. Out of bounds to South Carolina. David Ross into the game for the Gamecocks and a big lead I would say as Auburn wins by what's that 41 102 61 over their arch rival Alabama and I'll tell you nobody maybe with the exception of Duke is playing any better than Auburn in this country yeah and Connecticut won today but they only won by four at Seton Hall so uh, I'll tell you what I think Auburn's gonna be a number one seed truly believe that Mackey with uh, a dribbling act against Allison finally has to get it up give it up South Carolina has been holding the ball long in each possession and then usually unable to convert. They've had better success when they've attacked from the outset rather than 
milking the shot clock although I'm sure Eddie Fogler wants to shorten the game as much as he can being the heavy underdogs tie score Bulldogs and Razorbacks in Fayetteville Ross with a three and he got it David Ross notches his first field goal and makes it a six point game Gamecock still in that two three zone defense Kentucky will work this perimeter until they can find somebody open in the middle Saul Smith for three Prince with a putback well that's the age-old story of the zone isn't it no individual blockout assignments and sometimes it hurts your rebounding that was a graphic example also a fortuitous bounce I might add those are good too mm -hmm. Hagan Rouse with the entry pass and Kinlock looks like he doesn't quite know what to do with it if in doubt shoot out of bounds to Kentucky. For South Carolina, going the lineup are Gallman and Antonio Grant. Gallman and Grant and Davis, and Davis returning for the Gamecocks. It was a point in the season, Tom, where Eddie Fogler thought maybe he might have had it turned around a little bit. He had back-to-back -back SEC victories against Vanderbilt and Ole Miss, and well, maybe they might turn it up a notch or two and just haven't been able to get it going. And I think with the loss of LaRon Williams actually having him off of the club, while they may have lost a lot offensively, I think maybe they may be a better overall basketball team because of it. Scott Padgett returns to the game, replacing Kamara. Padgett right in the middle of the zone, takes it to the basket, can't score. Nice rebound by Mackey, and Mackey's in a hurry. B.J. Mackey fakes the pass, lays it up and in. Beautiful play by Mackey. I would tell you what, his body was going one way, the ball was going the other, he brought it back in. That was a terrific offensive move. This guy's been doing this for four years at South Carolina. No surprise here, the All-SEC performer for the last two years with an easy layup and a nice move. Look at this. A little look right, look left, a little turn of the ball. <laughs> he had the three Wildcats colliding like bowling pins there. <laughs> back within six. South Carolina's changed defenses again. They've gone back man to man. Ryan Hogan returns for Kentucky. Bradley forced out away from the basket by Gallman. Padgett for three. Long kick. Hogan was nearly over the back. No whistle, and South Carolina has it. Good block by Herbert Lee Davis that time. South Carolina hoping to cut into that six-point lead or six-point deficit. Three-point shot by Davis is an air ball, but right into the hands of Grant, who puts it home. South Carolina's battled back now. They're within four. After they went forever without scoring a point, they're back in it down 17-13. Good lob to Bradley. Weak side help from Lucas didn't matter. He was too small to make any difference. Bradley. Herbert Lee Davis tried to assist a little bit, too. Bradley was much too strong. Davis with a step past Hogan. Gives it up to Grant, and the Gamecocks set up their offense. The uh, students taunting with the air ball chant, and they've had a lot of ammunition here in the first half. There's a three, no good by Lucas. But Johnson wades in for the offensive rebound. Good work. He bit, battled Bradley in there to get that one away. Bradley with a good steal. Bradley over the top to knock it away. Three on three break. Allison taken away by Lucas, but Hogan saves. Smith, the open man, passed up the shot. And Antonio Grant has called for a holding foul. First foul on Grant. Tom, I think that possession right there may be indicative of what's happened to Kentucky's offense in the last couple of games. Uh, they, they pass up a lot of shots that maybe they could take. And Tubby Smith has been worried about the confidence of his shooters. They have a six-point lead. BMW Roadsters from $30,520.
Okay, honey. How about this? I'm seeing a cabin. Are you seeing plumbing? <laughs> Imagine a big porch with a stone fireplace, plenty of room for the grandkids. When you find yourself writing the story of your life, tell it to Jefferson Pilot Financial. We'll help make it happen. My big pain with dancing bears? No. Oh. <laughs> you had me to the bear. Come on. <laughs> Energy efficient water heaters that make life comfortable for everyone. Max Loan, a low interest way to bring money saving appliances right to your door. Service Care, a simple, affordable plan that keeps things running smoothly. And gas logs that warm heart and hearth year round. Surprised you can get all this from LG and E Energy? You shouldn't be. Life's good here, and no one's working harder to keep it that way. South Carolina hanging within striking distance over the uh, favored Wildcats. They're within six. Kentucky up 19-13 with 7.50 left in the first half. Eddie Fogler's had his struggles. You see those three good winning seasons in his years in Columbia. Fogler is the, the only SEC coach to ever take two different teams to SEC championships and to be SEC Coach of the Year at two different schools. He won the 97 SEC Championship in South Carolina after having taken the title in 93 at Vanderbilt. There's a very competitive guy who's had a very tough year. I saw him before the game today, and he was out there, and he said, this is one of my favorite days of the year. I just love Rupp Arena, and he had a little rueful smile and laugh <laughs> as he said it. Evans for three. Kentucky is shooting one of six from three-point range. Overall, they're eight of 17, just under 50%. South Carolina, six of 19, 32% and one of eight from three-point range. Those are typical of the year, though. I mean, they're shooting right around 50% from the field and uh, somewhere right. around 30% or less from beyond the arc. Thank goodness for Michael Bradley. Rebounds uh, one in favor of South Carolina after they were down big early. And the bench scoring nine to four in favor of the Gamecocks. Mackey goes to the left hand and lays it in. What a great move. I'll tell you what, he does magic things with that basketball. I think when his career is over, he has a future as a juggler, or maybe a, a high wire performer. Well, we'll turn around. They're handling the basketball now, and they're moving the ball pretty well on the perimeter area. Evans. Kentucky got it in. Right over Grant. They got the ball down in the low block to Hishimu Evans, and he has three points. South Carolina's handled that press pretty well from them, uh, after the first three or four opening minutes. They've committed four turnovers, Kentucky two. Gallman misses the shot, Turner away with it. Nice rebound by Turner, he got up over Grant. And Grant steals it from him. Took it away from him, and then he's fouled by either Bradley or Turner. They were there together, and it'll be Michael Bradley with his first. Well, nobody can do this much better in the country, not only in the SEC, but in the country, than uh, pushing off Wayne Turner and getting it up and off of the glass. Nice move by B.J. Mackey. Maybe a little acting job, too, by Wayne Turner. And just judged on his uh, performance thus far, we say he was one of the favorites to be the BP best player from South Carolina. We'll be choosing one from each team. In addition to recognizing our two best players, BP and its dealers contribute $2,000 to the Southeastern Conference to be distributed among the member institution scholarship funds under a conference-approved plan. Certainly one of the leading candidates, I think, for player of the year in the Southeastern Conference, too, Tom, although his club has had a bad year. Yeah, a tough choice. Do you give it to a player who whose stats are magnified maybe because he's the only player they have that really can score. They've only won seven games. It's a difficult decision. Kamara with a block of the shot by Lucas. Turner a little guilty of over penetration the last time. This time backs it out. Grant does not challenge him. Good double, double team down. of yeah. Bradley. Found Turner, and Turner converts the shot. Tom, that, that's something he does very well, getting that ball and floating in that free throw line area, shooting that jump shot, going left or right. Nine points for Wayne Turner. Tops in the game. And Turner with a brilliant steal into the passing lane. Couldn't control it, so he managed to flip it off B.J. Mackey. Out of bounds, Kentucky ball. Let's go back and watch Turner pick up his eighth and ninth point off for Bradley, trying to get him the pass, and does right at the free throw line. There's that floater going left. Now watch again the defensive work here by Wayne Turner. He is the steals leader at Kentucky. He just got another one. 
all time Kentucky Steel's leader, Wayne Turner. 220 steals. That's a lot of pilfering. <laughs> Evans faked the pass, missed the shot at the first time. Bynes off the front of the rim, off the glass, and then down. Mackey got in trouble, picked up his dribble a little too soon. Kamara out there challenging. Ten-point lead for the Wildcats. Turner doing a nice job getting through those screens. That one set by Gallman. He floated behind it. Turner and Allison have taken turns on Mackey. It's Turner on him right now. The challenge, good challenge. And a timeout saves the turnover by Rikus Nix. Well, they covered up those guys, didn't they? Nix couldn't get rid of the ball and the defensive work by Kentucky covering up all of the guys trying to break toward the ball. Outstanding defense. Go to the Big Ten for a final score as Purdue wins 63-56 in Champaign. And in the ACC, Duke continues to roll along. Easy winner over the Demon Deacons, 102-71. to Well, led by Wayne Turner, Kentucky has a 10-point advantage. Turner's hit four of his five shots, including a three-pointer. Nine points and three beat rebounds for Wayne here in the early going. And as you saw, he made a sparkling defensive play just a couple of moments ago and has the tough assignment of checking B.J. Mackey at the moment. Nine points for Wayne. Pretty tough to be the leading scorer and also having to guard the other team's best score. Just two to shoot, and Mackey got it away. And a foul on the rebound against South Carolina. It's on Kinlock. That's number two on Damien. Six now against the Gamecocks. In fact, both teams have committed six fouls. One plus one on the next. Sort of got the feeling coming in today, a lot of these Kentucky fans are interested in seeing what their club is going to do after two straight losses and a week off, what they were going to be like today. Their defense has held up pretty well. Well, they're heavily favored, of course, but uh, if you're a Kentucky fan, you want to see perhaps how they win, not whether or not they win, because they are big double-digit double -digit favorites. Allison misses a three. Allison nearly had the steal. Turner completes it. And his shot Block is blocked by Mackey. by Mackey. Kamara with a jam on the follow. Whoa, was that two great plays? One by Mackey and then the follow by Kamara. And Davis throws it away. Tenacious Kentucky defense. Turner makes this completion. B.J. Mackey will make a brilliant block, but Kamara is there to finish it off for the Wildcats, who lead by 12. Hello, friend. Al Purnell here. I want to tell you about this box of Purnell's old folks' quick frozen country sausage patties. It's outstanding in its feel. Get a box of 30 old folk country sausage patties. Keep them frozen, and when you're ready, place the frozen patties in the skillet. It unlocks the flavor as it thaws and cooks. It's made right. Tastes like country sausage ought to taste. Keep Purnell's old folk sausage in your freezer, and you're ready for a treat many times. It's good. If you're a college basketball fan, Piccadilly and Morrison's Cafeteria has an opportunity of a lifetime for you. How would you and a friend like to be members of the Jefferson Pilot Sports Television crew for one of the biggest college basketball tournaments in the nation? You can register at any Piccadilly or Morrison's Cafeteria or send us a postcard with your name, address, and phone number. The lucky winner will be drawn February 23rd and will win an all-expense-paid trip to work with J.P.'s crew during the tournament telecast in Atlanta, Georgia, March 4th through the 6th. Where does Napa keep over 200,000 different parts? Right up here. Now remember, your belt tension on this is critical. Well, I'll sell you all the struts you want, but I wouldn't recommend putting them in without the right tools. Okay, is it a 77 or a 78? Because they changed the carburetor in 78. Actually, that's not a stupid question at all. I know what it used to be. You don't stay at Napa long handing out the wrong answers. And I'm not planning on going anywhere. We keep America running.
Register at Napa to win two weekend tickets to the SEC tournament plus $500 cash. After the Wildcats take on Georgia, stay with Wave 3 News for a special look at how UK's Travis Ford is passing on his basketball legacy. Wednesday at 11 on Wave 3 News. Kentucky on a 10-5 run over the last five minutes, much to the delight of Ashley Judd, who is sitting uh, with her dad, Michael Simonella. 3.32 left in the half, and Kentucky up 12 for a chance to win a trip to New York City, courtesy of Pizza Hut and the Pizza Hut Big New Yorker Pizza. Check out our website at jpsports.com. Enter, and you can win a trip for two, including airfare, accommodations, and $500 in spending money. Seven South Carolina turnovers, only three committed by the Wildcats. Kentucky's defense has really been stellar today, even though I know South Carolina is a little shorthanded on the offensive end with only one guy that really is a threat to score. Uh, still look awfully good. Evans for three. Neither team can buy a three at the moment. That one never had a chance. It never got above the rim. Kentucky's one for eight. South Carolina is also one for eight. That's a, a robust 13%. Evans tries again. Same result. Saved right into the hands of Nix. Two on two break. Nix had Mackey on a wing, wide open, spotted for a three. And he got bailed out with a Kentucky foul. Tried to make a nice spin move down inside. He had both Kentucky defenders going back, but when you've got Mackey standing in the corner, you've got to get him the basketball. One of the reasons why South Carolina has not had much success lately. Well, Kentucky shoots the threes well. They usually have success. And one common thread through their losses has been that 16% three-point shooting. They're 13% today, but a little different story when you're playing an outmanned Gamecock team. Nix makes the free throws. Cuts the lead back to 10 as Tayshawn Prince returns for the Wildcats. Shimu Evans takes a seat on the bench. We invite you to stay tuned at halftime for Bell South's You Call the Play feature. A look at big plays from past SEC games. Skip pass over to Turner, who made a nice catch. Kamara trying to screen for Prince out there. Turner for three. Missed that one off the front of the rim. Carolina has it. Nix again leads the break to Gallman, who laid it in. Now that time. It was a textbook fast break handled by Rikas Nix. And what made it work was Gallman sprinting to the other end, just running the floor. Go, 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 Kentucky with his two-point guard, Smith and Turner on the floor at the same time. Smith for three. Good shot. He's got an open one. He's got to take that. His first field goal and only Kentucky's second three-pointer of the day. Grant, bad shot. Johnson had it for a moment. And now Grant for Carolina. John Clarkerty, though, has spotted an infraction. Watch again, South Carolina on the break. Good handle this time. Right there is Grant to pick it up and lay it in. It's the way you do it. You run the floor, fill the lanes, and get the ball from the guy running the controlled break in the middle. What Clarkerty was calling for was a reset of the shot clock. Jump hook, not there. Gallman couldn't hit it, and Kentucky comes away with it. Prince the rebound. Now Camaro, guarded by Johnson, turns, faces in, throws up an air ball. Not a very pretty shot. No, it wasn't. Went all the way over the rim. You ever shoot any air balls? Had lots of them. Still do. Mackey spinning, draws the foul. He'll shoot two free throws. Jamal McGlure with a help out defense. They're going to say it happened on the floor and not in the act of shooting. So instead of getting two, it'll be a one and one. Mackey with a good spin move right here. Crosses over. Watch him make that spin against Turner. Now McGlure bumps him as he goes up for the shot. I thought he got him on the way up. Here's an astounding uh, statistic, Larry, I, to me anyway. If B.J. Mackey continues on his present pace about six free throws a game. He will finish his career as number two in the Southeastern Conference all time in free throws made, exceeded only by Pistol Pete Maravich. That's incredible. That is an incredible number. He has a knack for getting to the free throw line. 
They passed up Bailey Howe today in the no as number 20 on the all-time career scoring list in the Southeastern Conference. I think he has a chance at the present pace to finish at what, number 10? Number 10, correct. Going into today's game, he'd made as many by himself as the rest of the team and hit a much better percentage. That's another incredible <laughs> stat. Our research team just continues to dig them up. Roger Roebuck is up nights burning the uh, proverbial midnight oil to come up with those nuggets. Uh, he's punching in on that computer. I know better. Rikus Nix, number one. We'll go to the Kentucky free throw line for a one plus one. Announcers for this game selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. Any use of the broadcast that the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Hey, Tom, you and I have had a chance to see a lot of SEC games so far this year. And I talked to you last night about this. I really felt like this year may be the best year I've seen in recent years for the number of quality freshman players that we've got in this league. And I think Prince is going to be one of those guys that's going to develop, as, as is Kamara. And Allison. And Allison. A lot of good ones around. Florida, of course, has made its uh, successful season on the play of its freshmen. They've got a good one at Georgia. D.A. Lane, the little guard down there, has been a, he's had an outstanding year. And Yarborough, of course, at Tennessee. Brandon Dean over at Arkansas. Yeah, they've got a bunch of nice freshmen, too. So Gary O'Gibson, I think, is going to be an awfully good T.J. Cleveland was the MVP of the win at South Carolina Wednesday night. Right. 20-second timeout. Tubby Smith likes to do this in the final seconds of the half to set up a play. He has a 20 that doesn't carry over anyway, so he uses it here to try to set up what he hopes will be a scoring play just before the intermission. Gives us a chance to remind you what's coming away on most of these Jefferson Pilot SEC stations Wednesday night. Some of you will see Tennessee take on Ole Miss. It's an 8 o'clock start on the Eastern Time, 7 Central. Some of you will see the Georgia Bulldogs visit Rupp Arena to take on the Kentucky Wildcats, the final regular season meeting between uh, G.G. Smith and Saul Smith. Check your local listings for the game in your area this Wednesday night. And if you get a chance to tune in on that one, you may see the player of the year in the Southeastern Conference, and Jermaine Jones, he's certainly a leading candidate. South Carolina with a good defensive play. Grant then tried to whip it into front court to Mackey, and Turner deflects it out of bounds. South Carolina ball, so the setup of the play didn't work. And now South Carolina with a chance to uh, come close to taking the final shot. There are 40.2 seconds left, 33 on the shot clock. Saul Smith complaining about the fact he got bumped in the head when he got trapped. Mackey guarded by Turner. They watch the five second call. South Carolina looks like they're going to run the shot clock down as far as they can. There's to be a little time left for Kentucky to get it back. There's a steal. Prince took it away from Rouse and jammed it. Careless, careless pass. Here's Mackey. Penetrates all the way under the hoop. Puts it up. Wanted the foul. Couldn't get it. Tapped in by Grant. As the half comes to a close. So the two teams trade baskets to close the half. The first on the steal by Tayshawn Prince of Kentucky. Nix makes a careless pass. Prince stepping into the passing lane when Rouse didn't step out to meet it. And jams. And then the incomparable B.J. Mackey takes it down, and Grant puts home his miss. So it's a 10-point game at halftime. Back to Rupp Arena for halftime activities in a moment. SEC Basketball is brought to you by BMW. Visit your local BMW center for a test drive. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. By Amoco Ultimate. You expect more from a leader, and you get it. By Purnell's Old Folks Country Sausage, because it's good. And by Bell South. Bell South is proud to be the official telecommunications company of the SEC. After months of anticipation, the big day has finally arrived. Mr. Johnson, huh? it's a Nike. Say hello to Just for Feet's new arrivals like the Nike Air Holistic Uptempo. It's an Asics. The new Gel Kayano running shoe. You've got an Adidas. The new response ready for you to take home. Twins. Meet the New Balance 888's men's and women's cross trainers. The new shoes are here. This week at Just for Feet, where the 13th pair is free. 
Of all the stories you've come to know, the most important by far is your own. With no other story, you care so much about how it turns out. Are you just waiting to see, or are you writing it the way you want it to go? At Jefferson Pilot Financial, we're doing more than providing financial services. We're helping you write the story of your life. My classroom is out there. Where scientific theory and reality collide. We actually work with an organism that tracks pollutants from the oceans to ourselves. My research team is made up of some of the brightest minds in the country. And they're half my age. The University of South Carolina. There's a world of opportunity right here. Dark a shame, darling, dark a shame. Thank you for all the joy and pain. <laughs> Crystal Clear Amico Ultimate. You expect more from a leader, and you get it. The strength of the Southeastern Conference is legendary. Six national championships in 1998, the nation's top football attendance for the 17th consecutive year, and more than $35 million in scholarships. At Regions Bank, we salute the strength of the SEC, because whether it's in athletics or banking, we know that strength and teamwork lead to success. Regions Bank, official bank of the SEC championships. The Southeastern Conference enjoys a rich tradition of excellence in both academic and athletic endeavors. A major reason for the success of the SEC is our partnership with some of America's top corporations. As corporation sponsors, these businesses help fund SEC youth clinics, drug education programs, and are the official presenters of each of the men and women's conference championships. The Southeastern Conference is proud to be associated with these companies, which are making a positive contribution to intercollegiate athletics. Jefferson Pilot Financial presents the SEC Good Works Team, recognizing the superior community service efforts of league basketball players. Today's honoree is guard B.J. Mackey of the University of South Carolina. B.J. is very involved with the hepatitis immunization program that promotes awareness of children getting their shots on time. He's filmed a public service announcement and led a press conference on the subject. Jefferson Pilot Financial is proud to salute B.J. Mackey for being named a member of the SEC Good Works team. Halftime at Rupp Arena where Kentucky leads South Carolina by 10. The Wildcats hoping to win their 20th game of the season for the ninth consecutive campaign. And with that 10-point lead at halftime, Kentucky led by their seniors. Uh, they're doing a good job scoring, especially Wayne Turner and rebounding. But I thought, Larry, the dominant feature of that first half was Kentucky's defense. I agree. And really the pressure, I think, against South Carolina causing some of those turnovers, allowing Kentucky to get some easy baskets. Uh, that defense has been good all year, though, Tom. In the SEC games, they actually are number one in the conference in points allowed. And uh, right now they're holding South Carolina to 31% shooting. Now it's time in to look at our Buick Player of the Week. The SEC Player of the Week is presented by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Arkansas senior Derek Hood continues to prove why he's one of the best in the SEC. Last week, Hood was impressive for the Hawks, averaging 14 and a half points and seven rebounds a game. Hood is currently the league leader in rebounds at 10 a game and is the only player in the SEC who averages a double-double. He's also third in the conference in field goal percentage. Arkansas's Derek Hood, our Buick Player of the Week. The Kentucky Wildcats, despite shooting only two of 10 from three-point range, have hit 12 of 19 from two-point range, and that accounts for their 10-point advantage over South Carolina, 33 to 23 at halftime. Wayne Turner with nine points to lead Kentucky, and B.J. Mackey with eight points, the leading South Carolina scorer here at halftime. Going back to Rupp Arena in just a moment. 
It's SEC tournament time. While the league's best battled it out in the Georgia Dome, you can be a part of the action at the 1999 Dr. Pepper SEC Fan Fair. Play the games between the games at the Georgia World Congress Center, March 4th through the 6th. Daily passes are only $6. A three-day pass is $12. Challenge your friends to the many interactive games. See former SEC basketball stars on the press box stage and grab a bite at the Fox Sports South Timeout Grill. It all happens at the 1999 Dr. Pepper SEC Fan Fair. Now, play in the snow as long as you want, because Dodge makes America's longest-lasting line of full-size pickups. And since Dodge also makes, overall, America's most powerful line of full-size pickups, this Ram 4x4 is more than a fair-weather friend, even when the weather isn't fair. And now that you can get low 1.9% APR financing, hurry in, while you can still get out. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. It's out there, strong, tough, agile, Bigfoot. From big old tires, the strongest, the toughest, the best tire to get you through Bigfoot country. Bigfoot, get off your feet and on a set, only at Big O Tires. Pizza Hut dared anyone to find a better pizza. Oh, really? Papa John took the challenge and won in independent taste tests. One big time. That's not surprising. After all, we were named best pizza chain two years in a row. Anybody can claim to make a better pizza, but it's you, the consumer, who've decided. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Try our Papa's Choice, a large pizza with your choice of up to five toppings for just $10.99. The Ultimate Drive of the Week is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Auburn's Chris Porter gets the drive started, pulling in the rebound, handing off to Doc Robinson, who throws a three-quarter court pass to Bryant Smith. He puts up the jumper, no good, but from out of nowhere comes Air Porter. Porter follows up that miss with an electrifying jam, an incredible play by Auburn's Chris Porter. And that's BMW's Ultimate Drive of the Week. Halftime at Rupp Arena, Kentucky leading South Carolina 33-23. to This weekend marked the official opening of the UK Basketball Museum. Mayor Pam Miller, UK President Charles Wethington, Jim LeMaster officiating at the opening of the museum, which is in the Lexington Civic Center adjacent to Rupp Arena. One of the all-time greats there, Wawa Jones, with an autograph, one of the greatest all-round athletes in Kentucky history. Todd Nash, one of our favorite players, a guy I played with for one year. An enjoyable visit with him last night. Of course, there's Ralph Beard and his, uh, look at this, <laughs> he's doing his own virtual reality shot right there. One of the most popular exhibits uh, will be that virtual reality setup at the UK Basketball Museum. Back for more halftime in just a moment. Bell South presents You Call the Play. After a seesaw battle, Kentucky saw Vanderbilt tie the score with under seven seconds to play. Facing the length of the floor to go, what should the Wildcats do? Get it in the hands of a guard for a three-point shot or push it up for the two-point shot? What would you do? You call the play. It's time for another Piccadilly People profile. You try saying that three times fast with your mouth full of catfish. That's what Sally Sanders comes for twice a week. Plus, whatever else catches her eye on our 50-foot spread of hot, wholesome, home-style cooking. This time, it's the cherry pie. And the chocolate cake? Oh, well. There's always room on the tray for one more. Or two. Piccadilly Cafeteria. Who says you can't please everybody? The University of Kentucky is on the move. Dynamic. A national leader in supercomputing. Diverse. With students from all 50 states and more than 100 foreign countries. Emerging. As one of America's top public research universities. Faculty. Nearly 98% have the highest degree attainable in their field. Welcome to the University of Kentucky, boldly embracing the 21st century. Remember life in the fast lane? I do. First you meet, then you get married, and things slow down. Yeah, right. 
To help you keep up, drive the supercharged Regal GS Sport Sedan. Plenty of room, standard traction control, and the most power in its class. And now, Regal comes with something that'll make it even easier to drive. Regal by Buick, official car of the supercharged family. Tom Vincent's a guy who's always looking for a deal. Hey, Tyler! Buddy! Hi, hey, Tom. Listen, here you're the big man down at Bell South. Well, I... Hey, listen, we go way back, huh, Tyler? Yeah. So you think you could hook me up with some caller ID, some call waiting, maybe a little of that, three-way calling? How much would that run, your old buddy? Uh, well, with Bell South Complete Choice, you can have your local phone service and your pick from up to 20 calling features for one flat rate. Yeah, Complete Choice. Uh, you know, just between you and me. The Wildcats inbound the ball, and Jeff Shepard spots a wide-open Nazi Muhammad on the right wing. He gets the ball to him, and with time ticking away, Nazi drives and throws up an incredible shot that hits the top of the backboard and tickles the twine. The Cats escape with a two-point victory. You Call the Play has been a presentation of Bell South. Ten-point Kentucky lead at halftime at Rupp Arena 33-23. Go online with the Southeastern Conference at secsports.com. This interactive site features up-to-date stats as well as cybercast coverage of conference events throughout the year. And uh, with Kentucky controlling the first half, uh, with their defense especially, how about some first half highlights? All right, I'll give them to you. <laughs> Let's move on. Here are some of the highlights of the first half. We'll start with South Carolina. Antonio Grant had 6.6 rebounds in that first half. Here he gets one of those rebounds and sticks it back. Good first half for that young man. And of course, B.J. Mackey he leads in every offensive category that this club has, making a nice maneuver down inside against that Kentucky defense. On the other end, Kentucky did a nice job with their defense, stealing the ball and also laying up. Watch Padgett come up with a steal right here, push it to the other end. He's got Turner on his right, giving him the basketball, getting it right back. Good two-man break right there. And, of course, Turner also with good floaters in the first half, picked up nine big points, two of them right here on this nice move, going counter against that South Carolina defense. And our Amico Ultimate Halftime Stats, the shooting percentages for South Carolina, 31%, Kentucky, 48%. Kentucky has missed some opportunities at the free throw line, and neither team seems to be able to hit a three-pointer. Turnovers, eight South Carolina, five Kentucky points off turnovers, 11 to four. Kentucky seniors have played well, and so has the South Carolina bench. Getting ready for the second half, we'll be back in just a moment. Dear BP, what if people could call the big BP store and order things and fly them out in tiny helicopters? That way people could go where they're going faster. Signed, Lauren. Dear Lauren, our BP stores are designed so people can fly in, get what they need, and fly out. As for your idea, it's growing on us. BP, we keep you moving. This is Jane. Hi, I was coming down. I'm in sales. This is Jane's car. Traveling sales. Hence Jane's problem. Nationwide insurance. That's why this is Jane's insurance company. The company with round-the-clock claim service and a promise to help put your car back together just as you remember it. Just as soon as possible. Ah, and this would be Jane's smile. Call a nationwide agent today and get nationwide on your side. cellular phone from us this morning. You forgot your battery charger. Welcome to the Kentucky Lottery's Cash 5 Prize Squad. It may not look like much, but a lot happens here. The job requires constant Five, alertness. Thank you, thank you. And rigorous training. With an average of 1.5 grand prize winners every week, we have to be ready to deliver $100,000 Cash 5 Prize Squad on a moment's notice. We got one. Get the lights. They say somebody's gonna win. It might as well be you. And that's real, you know. Somebody's gonna have a great day. SEC Basketball is being brought to you by Alto. Cellular, paging, long distance, and more. By BP. 
At BP, everything we do is to keep you moving. By the new Regal GS5 Buick, official car of the supercharged family. And by Nationwide Insurance. Nationwide understands that every driver is different. So for insurance coverage and financial services that meet your needs, call a Nationwide Insurance agent today and get Nationwide on your side. Getting ready for the second half at Rupp Arena. You know, we're very uh, interested in the great traditions of SEC basketball, and occasionally we get a chance to set the record straight. Cotton Nash was a Kentucky All-American player, seventh all-time leading scorer, over 1,700 points. And for years, Larry Conley has claimed that he made Nash an All-American with his passes. Well, now we have some graphic new evidence to refute that claim. Here's Larry Conley, a sophomore, with a defender in his face, forcing a shot at a game against Tulane. <laughs> Meanwhile, a closer look. Cotton Nash, number 44, wide open under the basket. Look at that. <laughs> Terry Mobley's wide open, too. What's Conley do? Forces the shot. While Cotton Nash was wide open under the basket. No telling how many points Cotton had scored if you just gave him an occasional pass. Oh, I knew there was something coming here somewhere. <laughs> you, there's always a setup. Even John Clockerty's in on it. He's <laughs> laughing about it right now. I gave him a few passes, oh. but when I've got a chance to score on my own, I would take advantage of that. Well, the guy was right in your face. You I forced know. it. You had Terry Mobley was also open. He and Cotton under the basket, both wide open for a layup, and you're forcing the shot. Well, Tom, <clears throat> occasionally that happens. Take a look at Nash's jersey. I'm going to get off of my passing right now. <laughs> Talk about my shooting. <laughs> Cotton's son, uh, Patrick Nash, uh, supplying that photograph, and uh, now you have the rest of the story. <laughs> oh, nice setup, guys. Way to go, Roger. South Carolina with possession to open the second half, but not for long. Turner slaps it away, and here comes Kentucky. Evans for three. Tough break. That one was in and out. He had a nice look at the basket. You got to take those shots. I don't think there's uh, much chance Kentucky will climb out of the cellar in three-point shooting in the conference. Not today. Johnson made a nice move, but... In traffic, missed the shot. Good move by Allison. Give the ball up to the point guard. Let him bring it up. Evans is going to take another one. Yeah, there you go. If once you don't succeed, try. Try again. Try is the operative word there. That is a try basket and the third of the game for the Wildcats. <laughs> Lucas backs it out and the... Gamecock set it up trailing 36-23. They've done their best to shorten the game to milk every possession. Lucas takes it to the rim. Nice hesitation as the defenders came at him to put it through his first basket. You know, Tom, that's another one of those freshmen we talked about in the first half. This is a young man that came out of Columbia as a point guard, and I think he's going to be a good one before it's over. He has struggled with his shooting a little bit this year, but I think he'll get better. Lucas committing the foul. Well, Hashimu Evans getting uh, right now the kind of looks he likes to have at the basket. Here's the second of a three-point attempt in this second half. This one goes to the bottom of the net. You know, he shot the ball so well last year, and he's been so inconsistent this year, as has Padgett. Well, something you could say about this entire Kentucky team, and also, I think, about many of the teams in college basketball. Inconsistency seems to be the rule. Evans got his own miss and laid it in. Good hustle that time, following up his own miss shot. First player in the game in double figures. One of the things I've noticed about college basketball, in particular in the SEC this year, is the dominance of the home team, more so than any other year I can remember in the last couple of years. Mackey gifted it up to Nix, who drives baseline, cut off by Padgett on the weak side help. Now Mackey, challenging Bradley, can't get it down. Rebounded by Johnson, who puts it in. I'm going to tell you what, he went over top of Allison than anybody else that was in his way. Good hustle by Bud Johnson, number nine SEC rebounder, showing you why he's at that level. First basket for him. He spent a lot of time on the bench with two early fouls. Patrick, oh, nice. nice pass to Bradley. Is that pretty? Oh, that was nice. Scott Padgett showing his passing talents. Double team and a trap of Lucas, knocked out of bounds by Kentucky. Watch Ashimu Evans on his missed third three-point attempt here in the second and a half, comes back and gets his own rebound and goes in for an easy layup to put him in double figures. Good job here by Bud Johnson going after that rebound. Would he ever battle Allison? 
You get a double team, find the open man. Padgett did, and it was Bradley. That's why he's shooting a high percentage. <laughs> Shots Cotton like Nash. that. Cotton Nash would have died for one of those oh, passes. I'm going to listen to this all day. In that situation, though, pageant double team is something you feel as much as see, isn't it? Because if you exactly wait until you see it, it's too late. You know where it's coming from. You know the other side's got to be open. A steal by Pageant. Lucas lost it. Nice pass again. Lead for Evans, and then a hustling Knicks deflects it out of bounds. Well, Regas Knicks there with a nice defensive play because Evans was ready to go up and dunk it. Pageant with those good hands again. Playing a good all-around game today. Watch him come up with this loose ball. Looks forward. Finds his teammate and off to the races. And catching up his mix. Evans, another three. Nice rebound that time by Kinlock. Mackey, Allison has him here. Low post, Gallman's jump hook comes off. Bradley one hands the rebound. And a double foul called by John Cockerty. Hishimu Evans, and I'm not sure who the guilty uh, Gamecock is. So it's going to be uh, alternating possession with the jump ball. The ball will go to the arrow, and it's pointing Kentucky's way right now. Evans and Nix, two fouls apiece. I don't know. If, I didn't see actually what happened, but John Parker he spotted it as they were running back up court. Nix goes out of the game. You know, Evans you, stays on the floor. Excuse me, Tom. I was going to say, when you got three officials on the floor, it's hard for anything to get by these guys. I mean, they can see. They've got great vision on the floor. Cockerty just looking forward to that day off tomorrow. He's going to be at home for a change. <laughs> oh, another great pass by Padgett to Bradley. Good looks, good delivery, and good finishes. Bradley ought to buy uh, Scott Padgett's dinner because uh, one of the reasons he has that high percentage is Padgett with a steal and a basket. How about Padgett's defensive work today? You know, Eddie Fogler told me back about three months ago, he says, I think the best player on Kentucky's team is Scott Padgett. He said he does everything with his club. He's good defensively, he can pass, he rebounds, and he can shoot. Watch again, the good pass down inside. Padgett, good look to the right side, and there's Bradley, and finishing it off. Bradley just committed his second foul. Scott Padgett playing the all-around game, one of the reasons he's a candidate also to be SEC Player of the Year. Jim, we found Osterberg. Get the phone in there. He's in Paris. Move, move. Cell phone. Okay, Jim, describe the device. C4, trip wires. Stay calm. They're going to disarm it. Okay, go. Trace the trip wire. Found it. Next. Do you see the black fire? Got it. Good. Now, whatever you... Wait. Is this phone from Altel? Uh, no. Who knows what this call could cost? I... I'm sorry. <laughs> Do rich people have more friends than the rest of us? Are they more deserving of a comfortable seat? Are they more entitled to break safely on a rainy day? Are we the only car company that doesn't think so? Century by Buick. Full of amenities for under 20000 And right now, Century is an even better value. Come in today and get $750 cash back on every new 99. Century by Buick. A luxury car for everyone. Driving past Kroger, what's in the air? The smell of fresh bread, bacon right over there At four, five, six, and seven o'clock The bread at Kroger Deli is piping hot Kroger Deli's baking up hot bread, hot bread Kroger Deli's baking up fresh hot bread do 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 Fresh from the deli you can count on us Kentucky over South Carolina, 44-27 with 15-48 left. And coming up soon, it'll be tournament time and the SEC tournament in Atlanta, scheduled for the Georgia Dome, March 4th through the 7th. You want to be there, and for tickets, you can call 1-800-994-SEC1. That's the SEC tournament in Atlanta, March 4th through the 7th. I always look forward to that. It's a big party. It is. Good gathering of all the teams coming in there, and I'm going to bet that Auburn has a few folks there this year. The short drive up to Atlanta from the plains of Alabama. And of course, Kentucky is always out in force. 
Tennessee will have a few there too, as will Florida. I think we just filled it up. Got it up. All the seats are sold. I could do that with my family. Kenlock against Bradley. Deflected out of bounds by Turner. Gamecocks get it back with 10 to shoot. Tom, for all the woes that Kentucky has suffered this year in offense, and obviously it's not been totally their field goal percentage shooting because they are tied for first place in that, but I want to tell you, their defense has been outstanding this year. Their field goal percentage defense may even beat last year, which was a 36-year low as far as defending other teams. Three-point shot. No good as the uh, shot clock expires by Rouse. Gamecocks get it back, and Mackey misses a three. Evans pull up three. Long rebound taken by Mackey, who's tripped by Ashimu Evans. That'll be his third. Well, Evans continues to launch those three-point shots from the outside. This one a little bit short on the front of the rim, and after Mackey gets it, he kind of goes underneath of him, and thus the foul. Mackey against the freshman Allison gets a screen from Kinlock. Repulsed by the Kentucky defense as Bradley came to help. Now Padgett picks him up on a switch and Allison takes him back. And a foul call on Michael Bradley, who, like Evans, picks up his third. Evans goes out now, replaced by Tayshawn Prince, as Arkansas has pulled away a bit from Mississippi State in Fayetteville. And Maryland leading North Carolina early in that ACC game, second half. Tough break for them the other day. Maryland loses a Keezy, their center, who's uh, averaging double figures in points and nearly double figures in rebounds. Pushing foul inside on South Carolina, away from the ball. Damian Kinlock picks up his third foul. Eddie Fogler trying to ride this season out. He says that uh, he's got some players coming in that he uh, thinks can turn the fortunes around in a hurry. Has a freshman who's applying for a medical red shirt that uh, was working out Wednesday before the game against Arkansas and look, looking good, looking with a lot of potential. And he's optimistic about the future. Wayne Turner with his first basket of the second half, 11th point of the game. Turner's on beam with his shooting today. Yeah, he really is, I and mean, he's doing a nice job. He's getting the good open shots and taking advantage of it. Padgett rejects Kinlock, but it's saved by Lucas. Lucas for three. Tap no good by Grant on the floor. Lucas saves it and threw it right to Prince of Kentucky. Padgett with a touch pass and then a travel will turn it over. Ragged sequence there, but the the only play of merit in that was Padgett seeing that South Carolina was about to pick the pass off and not trying to catch it, but just tapping it. To I thought that was an outstanding play on his part. Tough break for McGlure because he had a wide open shot from about four feet, could not get his feet underneath of him and get control of his body. David Ross into the game for Carolina. Ryan Hogan for Kentucky. by Prince. Lost it out of bounds. Carolina gets it back. 18 on the shot clock. Watch the battle underneath. You can see Prince right there in the paint area. Keeping his guy away. Good block. Got the hand up there. Got the good block and went right off his body. Almost got control uh -huh. of it. Prince has that long seven foot wingspan and he got the fifth block shot of the game for Kentucky. Reach in by Prince, knocked it away momentarily, and Kentucky does have the steal. Hogan went on the floor to get it. Padgett fakes the three, steps inside, and hits the 14-footer. Nice play by Padgett, having an outstanding game. Yeah, he's having a good all-around game. Had Hogan wide open on the right, decided to make that little spin move, the little 360 in the paint area. Eight points for Scott, who's also done a good job in every other phase, as you noted. Four of seven shooting for him. Rouse, Ross with the offensive board. Rejected, but a foul. Look, Kentucky getting a lot of blocked shots today. 
Watch Turner give the ball up. Padgett with a nice fake right there. Go in, make the spin move right there. Roush could do nothing but watch. You and I have talked about this so many times. In fact, we've shown it graphically how important these seniors are to Kentucky, and they're playing well today, and that's the reason they have this lead. David Ross, the sophomore from St. Petersburg, Florida, will shoot a pair of free throws. Misses the first, and South Carolina has gone five minutes without scoring, prompting the return of B.J. Mackey. Here's David Ross, who was actually born in Auburn, Alabama, if you can imagine that. Went to uh, Boca Siega High School in St. Petersburg and then found his way back to Columbia, South Carolina. Outstanding student. Four point in a National Honor Society scholar in high school. Padgett Smart saw the double team, didn't have anybody to pass to. Padgett hits the three. He has 11 points. They put all three of the seniors in double figures. Padgett, Turner, and Evans. Steal by Padgett. What else is he going to do? Fake the pass. Well, it rippled the net. It just didn't go through. McGlure, though, off the save from Prince. Now, well, Kentucky putting it together now. Mackey charging to the hoop. And Turner's called for the block. Nothing will get this crowd more riled than one of their Kentucky favorites goes on the floor and is called a blocking foul instead of a charge against the opposing team. Turner goes to the bench having sacrificed his body and then assessed the foul as well. Otherwise, though, things looking rosy for the Wildcats. They're looking for win number 20, and they're up 53-28. Meet the Joneses. Some families have dreams. We have plans. Plans for their college. Mm -hmm. Their nationwide agent helps them ensure their home, their cars. Plans if something should happen to one of us. Plan plans if nothing should happen to one of us. But nationwide <laughs> ensures something more. So we can retire and live large. <laughs> we ensure their future. Auto, home, life, retirement planning. Call a nationwide agent today and get nationwide on your side. Dear BP, what if people could call the big BP store and order things and fly them out in tiny helicopters? That way people could go where they're going faster. Signed, Lauren. Dear Lauren, our BP stores are designed so people can fly in, get what they need, and fly out. As for your idea, it's growing on us. BP, we keep you moving. Meet me where it always feels like summertime The swing on Wilson's Pond or old Mahoney sign The good times that you're craving are just around the bend It's time for a meal Meet me at the Dairy Queen Where the feeling never ends Meet me at DQ Come in and get a chicken strip basket with fries and Texas toast It's only $3.49 Come on to that feeling And meet me at DQ a source for sports on the internet, jpsports.com is online. Each week we'll bring you previews of our upcoming telecasts and in-depth coverage of the SEC. For the inside scoop, log on to jpsports.com. That's a good picture of Thomas Hammond right there. You'll find out a lot more about him. I hope a lot of you will go into that particular uh, part of the computer and uh, get that screen up and learn. Learn so much about him. It'll be not much. It'll be a very short. <laughs> How's your uh, computer going? Yeah, it's been fine. I wish I could get home to see it. A few people, <laughs> a few fans have been with us as you see the shooting there by uh, two teams in the second half. Through the last few years, we've been trying to badger Larry into the uh, 20th century as it's coming to an end. <laughs> and uh, he finally has purchased a computer. Well, there are times I get in that computer, it goes down as for the end. <laughs> I have to go get it back. Kentucky's put together a 15 to 1 run over the last six minutes. Gamecocks back into his own defense now. 
Kentucky doing an awfully good job this second half of taking care of the basketball. Only six turnovers in the whole game. Ryan Hogan right off a screen, ready to shoot, and nails a three, his first field goal. Isn't it amazing the confidence you build when things, when shots start to fall, defensive defenses start to work, you're rebounding, then your three-point shooting starts to improve. I love to see players come off that screen firing, ready mm -hmm. to shoot, no hesitation. A little pirouette and a dance and a traveling call on William Gallman. No 2-2 two -two for Gallman, but he did go to the floor with a nice turn. Well, Eddie, your uh, trip to Rupp Arena, your annual visit, uh, only has about 10 minutes to go. McGlure fouled as Gallman blocked the shot. Yeah, you, were, you were kidding about that in the first half about him. He really does enjoy coming in here. He likes the basketball, the fans. And, I mean, coming from the program that he came from, having played at North Carolina and been an assistant there for so many years, he really has great respect for uh, what Kentucky's been able to accomplish here. And of course, Frank McGuire, who was a, an old-time coach, used to love to come in here to play with Coach Rupp and probably didn't have nearly as much success as Eddie Fogler has had against Kentucky. McGlure missing the free throw. Free throw shooting is, of course, a recurring problem for the Wildcats, and they've not done a very good job of it today. Only three of nine. For the season, they're 64.3 percent. Ranks as ninth in the conference. Paget a nice hand as he sits down. McGlure hits the second. Tom, I really think that's something that's going to be very important for Kentucky if they're going to go anywhere in that NCAA tournament or the SEC tournament. They've got to start to make free throws. Double team of Grant on the trap. Bradley gets it safely to Johnson in front court. He just handed it to McGlure. Kinlock said. Uh, it's Valentine's Day, old buddy. Here's a little <laughs> gift. No roses, but here's the ball. Hogan for three. Wanted a foul, no call, and Johnson clears the rebound. Pretty impressive outing so far for the Kentucky Wildcats. There's a case of perhaps too much interior passing by the Gamecocks. Kinlock probably should have just taken it right up. And Tom, another reason I think it was helpful this uh, week for them to have that week off, I'll tell you in just a second, we'll watch this play. Kinlock made the head fake of McGlure and then hit the shot. Nice move by Damian Kinlock. I think the other reason it was good for them to have that was all the games they played in November and December. I mean, they really loaded up with a lot of games, probably more than any year I could ever remember Kentucky playing that many games before January the 1st. It was nice to have that break for them. McGlure shoots over the triple team and Bud Johnson clears it for the Gamecocks. They did very little this week. Uh, took two days off, lifted weights one day, came back at a hard practice on Thursday, and another good one yesterday. Looks like they came out here ready to play today for sure. Nice to get a break of a couple of days at this point of the season when your batteries are running a little low. Another turnover by the Gamecocks. That is number 18. Kentucky uh, is... Uh, Fogler goes to his bench, hopefully for help. Um, Kentucky, as you mentioned, had worked on the turnovers already above their season average South Carolina. Kentucky has done a good job limiting their turnovers today to only six, so the emphasis by Tubby Smith in practice obviously paying off. Hogan misses the three, batted around until Grant has it for Carolina. South Carolina has been consistent. Nine turnovers first half, nine second half. Only problem is we still have eight and a half minutes to play. Bradley penetrates. Dishes to Kinlock, too hard off the glass. I think those block shots are starting to have an effect on South Carolina. They're very reluctant to even put it up there. Smith tried to lob it to Kamara, who was unable to handle it. Pass was too far away under the basket, and the dad says, Saul, what in the world? <laughs> then he talks to Kamara. You know, oftentimes it's the guy going underneath that makes the call for that ball. Bradley, as Smith makes a dive for it, now numbers for uh, South Carolina. Grant misses the three-pointer. Allison with a rebound. McGlore, nice weak side help from the Carolina defense. Then Kamara swipes it away. McGlore standing wide open, waiting for it. And one as Goldman fouled him as he put it through. 
Well, the uh, turnover is really hurting South Carolina. They're just handing the ball back to Kentucky almost on every possession. Smith with a good pass down the inside. Now McGlure takes it, and you can see him grab by the shoulder. As he goes to the left side, William Gallman will pick up another foul. Number three on Gallman. McGlure steps to the line with seven points to his credit today. They make it eight. Timeout, 7.53 showing on the clock. Kentucky has built the big lead. It's time for another Piccadilly People Profile. Well, it's a good thing we have 50 feet of hot, wholesome, home-style cooking because our friends the Taylors have about 47 feet of family, which translates into four feet of corn on the cob and roughly a foot and a half of blue jello stacked vertically, which is hard to do. Kids, we don't try to figure them out. We just feed them. Piccadilly Cafeteria, who says you can't please everybody? cellular phone from us this morning. You forgot your battery charger. Seventeen years without a single word to him. I'd say that's a dandy start. Wild possums will dance a jig before I speak to that varmint. That's it! I'll give you old Kate one last try. Well, ask the darn fool what his number is. With plans as low as $40 for 400 anytime minutes a month, Powertel PCS can get anybody talking. Who are you to talk? Don't make me come over there, you old fool. You want a piece of me? Our Nationwide Insurance SEC Scholar Athlete of the Week is Tony Harris of the University of Tennessee. The sophomore from Memphis has a 3.06 grade point average in arts and sciences. Congratulations to Tony Harris of Tennessee, our Nationwide Insurance SEC Scholar Athlete of the Week. Well, it's uh, Valentine's weekend and the Wildcat See on the back of his shirt, it says, Carla, will you marry me? And during the timeout, they called Carla out to center court. The Wildcat proposed. He had the engagement ring and everything. So we assume she said yes. I hope she did. She's getting a free <laughs> ride off the court and a ring in her hand. <laughs> so far, South Carolina has managed only 30 points. They're low for the season, 34, which they scored against East Carolina. Turnover, nearly. Lucas saved it. it was a good catch, wasn't it? Just at the last second. Looked like it was on its way out of bounds. French pushing Grant out away from the basket. Allison has responsibility for Mackey. Shot clock at six. Johnson made the ball fake and drew the foul from... Kamara. Good work by the senior out of Columbia. He gets the freshman from Kentucky up in the air, draws the foul, and has a chance perhaps to pick up a couple of points right here as he steps to the strike. So Kentucky on its way to its 20th win of the season to go 9-3 and three in the SEC, and they still must play Georgia here at Arkansas, Vandy here, and then at Tennessee. Coming into today, they had a one-game lead on Tennessee, and so they still must go to Tennessee, but look at the Vols record or schedule. They have to play three straight games on the road. Mississippi, South Carolina, and Georgia. While Florida has one less game remaining than do Kentucky and Tennessee. Tom, that Eastern Division could truly get down to the last game of the year when Kentucky and Tennessee match up in Knoxville. Kentucky with that uh, tough visit to Fayetteville, too, even though the Razorbacks are not their normal robust self. Anytime you go to Fayetteville, you know it's going to be a battle. Allison for three. Desmond Allison, his first basket. Well, the threes are raining through the net in the second half for Kentucky. Well, uh, yeah, Tubby must have said something about it. They were woefully shooting the threes in the first half. Picked up the pace considerably here in the second. J.P. Blevins, the freshman from Edmonton, Kentucky, on the floor for the Wildcats. First time this game. Mackey 
Open off a screen, forget about it. Put it down, but B.J. Mackey's been held in check. That's only his 10th point. Comes off a 25-point performance against Arkansas Wednesday night, and on the season averaging 18. And you know, Tom, every time South Carolina walks out on the floor, they're going to look for B.J. Mackey. Everybody tries to target their defenses toward the guys that can make points. Well, he's the one guy that gets them for South Carolina. Allison. Air ball on that attempt. Lucas saves it inbounds right to Blevins of Kentucky. If that looks familiar to Kentucky fans, as Blevins air balls a three. It was the play last week against Alabama, of course, when uh, Saul Smith saved the ball inbounds under the Alabama goal that led to that uh, game-winning Alabama bucket. Watch Desmond Allison right here deliver the ball. Bottom of the net. Threes have been awfully kind to the Cats in the second half. Grant. Got McGlure to commit, but still couldn't get the shot away. Lucas nails the three. Kentucky has uh, led all the way. South Carolina able to hang within striking distance most of the half. They were down 10 at intermission. Second half, Kentucky has uh, put it out of reach. Prince misses the three. It'll be interesting to see Padgett's numbers at the end of this game. I think he's going to be really up there high in about three or four different categories. Had a nice all-round game. Lucas misses the three. Allison skies for the rebound. McGlure looking for position down low. Made a nice fake. And then Glass with a jump hook. Hey, that was a pretty good move right there. Little lead in toward the lane and then go to the other side. Made the uh, textbook play, faked one way, and drop step, jump hook off the glass. Makes the big man coaches smile. That's something he probably has worked on a lot this year. You know that footwork is so important too. Blocked. McGlore again. Two blocks. McGlore got two of them on one play, and Gallman the victim. Mackey then hits a three. Well, Mackey gave it up with a nice pass to Gallman. He saw McGlore block him twice, so he said, "Heck with this, I'll just shoot a three. <laughs> Kentucky would be better off to take the two. <laughs> Allison, that's his spot. That one rimmed out. Mackey to Gallman. Double down from Allison. Leaves Grant open for three. Back rim. Padgett another rebound. Tell you what, he's up there in points, assists, and rebounds today, and some steals. Prince misses a three. It's a three-point fest. Paget rebound and bucket. Offensive board for Paget at his 13th point. And a 22nd timeout, South Carolina. We've got a timeout. Kentucky has had the uh, three-point attempts going here in the second half. This is a 20, and they came out launching. <laughs> from the locker room here in the second half. Tom, I can't remember uh, in a Kentucky game this year where I've seen Kentucky in a half take so many three-point field goals. They have a season high, so we weren't dreaming. 25 three-point attempts, a season high for Kentucky today. They've only made six of them. Well, on most of these stations, we'll have two key games Wednesday. Some will see Tennessee against Ole Miss. Freshman standout Vincent Yarborough ties to keep the balls in the East race. And Ole Miss, of course, in a fight for the second bye. And then some of you will see Georgia and Kentucky. That's the last chapter in the Smith family saga. Saul and his brother Gigi and their dad Tubby Smith. Tennessee Ole Miss, some of you will see. Others will see Kentucky and Georgia. Check your local listings for the game in your area. I said uh, Tennessee Ole Miss, Kentucky, and Georgia. Levins with a pretty nice move down that right side, uh, but tossed the ball out of bounds. And now with 3.37 left, we'll take a commercial break. Kentucky's up big on the Gamecocks. It is a place where the finest is appreciated and private. Because when one has truly arrived, there is no need to announce it. Park Avenue by Buick, the power of understatement. Jim, we found Osterberg. Get the phone in there. He's in Paris. Move, move. 
Cell phone. Okay, Jim. Describe the device. C4. Trip wires. Stay calm. They're going to disarm it. Okay, go. Trace the trip wire. Found it. Next. Do you see the black fire? Got it. Good. Now, for every brain, is this phone from Altel? Uh, no. Who knows what this call could cost? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> This is Jane. Hi. I was coming down... I'm in sales. This is Jane's car. Traveling sales. Hence, Jane's problem. Nationwide insurance. That's why this is Jane's insurance company. The company with round-the-clock claim service and a promise to help put your car back together just as you remember it. Just as soon as possible. Ah, and this would be Jane's smile. Call a Nationwide agent today and get Nationwide on your side. Basketball is brought to you in part by Just for Feet, where the 13th pair is free. Kentucky's defense has forced South Carolina into 20 turnovers today, and the Wildcats have gotten 26 points off the South Carolina miscues. Wildcats, with that emphasis on not turning the ball over, have only done so nine times. South Carolina only four points off the Kentucky turnovers. B.J. Mackey takes a seat. It's been that kind of season for B.J. It has to be frustrating. He's kept his head up, though, and kept his game in gear. And it's a tribute to him that uh, a lot of guys would tank it when you don't have any help and you're carrying the load all by yourself and the frustration mounts, especially when you've played on good teams. And Bradley with a three that sails out of bounds. An air ball. And uh, so I, I think it's a real tribute to B.J. Mackey that he's kept his head in the game. He hasn't carped. He hasn't gotten on his teammates. He's played his game. He's done his job. He's done his business. And I think that's recognized around the college basketball world. And, and cer certainly makes Eddie Fogler's life a lot easier, too, yeah. because you've got a guy out there who's a senior who's had all the success he's had over the past three years, really controlling this basketball team and seeing the younger players and making sure that at least somewhere in the future they're going to remember what B.J. Mackey did in his last sen his senior year at South Carolina. Past Alex English for the all-time leading scorer title at South Carolina. Prince with a three. What else? Prince. Eight points for Tayshawn. Five for 16 now in the second half is Kentucky from that three-point stripe. Nice pass. Gallman missed the shot, couldn't finish it as Prince made a swipe at him. Bradley, been pretty quiet today. Nice move there, though. Jump hook. Kinlock couldn't contend with that, and Michael has nine points. Certainly hasn't hurt his field goal percentage uh, ranking in the country. Blocks Kinlock's shot. Kentucky blocks shots today. Pretty amazing. They uh, have a total of eight blocked shots. Just over two minutes remaining. Bradley from Kamara. Kentucky's going to have a lot of guys in double figures today. And uh, Bradley, you said about his shooting percentage. They have five men in double figures, and Bradley is hit five of six. Ross knocked it out of bounds. Kentucky's ball. The cheer is for Steve Massiello, the walk-on, who gets into the game with 149 left. wanting Massiello to shoot every time he touches the ball. Todd Tackett also into the game, the freshman from Paintsville, Kentucky. Tackett for three. About as quiet as 23,000 can get. Mm -hmm. The issue really hasn't been in doubt since early in the game, though Carolina was able to stay close. Bradley misses, Ross misses a putback, and Kamara has the rebound for the big blue. Inside the final minute. Massiello for three. 
And a few of the folks heading for the aisles right now, the knowing Kentucky's got one locked up, they're gonna pick up another 20 win season. This will be the 44th time in Kentucky's basketball history that they have recorded a 20 win season and nine in a row. <laughs> Prince gets one on the floor. That's the easiest rebound he'll ever get. He was on the seat of his pants. Kind of looks like a game at the Y at the moment. And Massiello steps out of bounds. Look very impressive today. Let's go back and take a look at the inside play right here. Kamara trying to come up with the ball, and there's Prince in the right place at the right time. Long three by Ross as the buzzer sounds, and Kentucky has its 20 win season. Outman Gamecock stayed with them for a half, but Kentucky blows it open with three point shooting in the second half to win going away 74 40. We'll be back to Rep Arena after this from your local SEC station. Dodge Dakota Club Cab's passenger room and available power can make its competition look like toys. Even though Dakota isn't a toy, it's really fun to play with in the snow. With available 4x4 traction and a responsive suspension, this truck handles snow like a charm. Right now, you can get a Dakota with a $1,000 cash allowance and a V8 upgrade at no extra charge. When you're ready to put away the toys, see Dakota at your friendly Dodge dealer. Introducing America Choice from GTE Wireless. Now you can use your wireless phone anywhere in the country without worrying about roaming or long distance charges. New America Choice, only from GTE Wireless. Welcome to the United States of America. Driving past Kroger, what's in the air? The smell of fresh bread, bacon right over there. At four, five, six, and seven o'clock, the bread at Kroger Deli is piping hot. Kroger Deli's baking up hot bread, hot bread. Kroger Deli's baking up fresh hot bread. Do 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 Fresh from the deli, you can count on us. SEC Basketball has been brought to you by Century by Buick, a luxury car for everyone. By Alto, cellular, paging, long distance, and more. By BP. At BP, everything we do is to keep you moving. And by Nationwide Insurance. Nationwide understands that every driver is different. So for insurance coverage and financial services that meet your needs, call a Nationwide Insurance agent today and get Nationwide on your side. Kentucky gets its 20th victory this season, now 20 and 6. They go to 9 and 3 in the SEC, whipping Carolina 74-40. Now let's take a look at our all-tell play of the game. One of the features of this Kentucky team has been interior passing. Their big men can pass. Scott Padgett here gets the entry pass on the low block. The double team comes, and he immediately spots Michael Bradley for the easy bucket. Great passing by Scott Padgett to Michael Bradley, our all-tell play of the game. Kentucky wins it easily, and right now, Tubby Smith is standing by with Larry Conley. Larry? Standing here with uh, Tubby Smith, and obviously, Tubby, a big win for you today. How important was it for you to have this week off just prior to getting ready to play South Carolina? Well, you know, we were really, uh, our confidence was shaking, losing to a, uh, an Alabama team that really played well. But everybody's going to play well against us when we go on the road. And, and those were two tough losses for us against Florida and Alabama. But to bounce back and have a good game today, I'm very pleased. That, you know, we're able to, to get to talk some more. Guys had some time off. Uh, we've had a pretty tough schedule the whole year. So, so it's good to get a good, a good, get a good win like this here at home. Well, you and I were talking off camera a few minutes ago about how important it is you have to show up every night to play. And the Alabama game, I think, probably proved that for you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we didn't come you know, with the intensity that we needed to come with. I think you know, we had, again, we had a tough loss at Florida. They outplayed us. But then we bounce, We don't recover from that. And that's what you got to do. You got to be able to recover and come right back. 
And, uh, and I didn't think we responded very well after that uh, the loss in Florida, but we responded pretty well today. Well, you've got a few more games left before the SEC tournament. Good luck to you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Larry. Okay, Tom. Tom? All right, we'll take a break now. Kentucky wins at 74-40. When we return to Rupp Arena, we'll visit with some of the victorious Wildcats. Hello, friend. Al Purnell here. I want to tell you about this box of Purnell's old folks' quick frozen country sausage patties. It's outstanding in its feel. Get a box of 30 old folk country sausage patties. Keep them frozen, and when you're ready, place the frozen patties in the skillet. It unlocks the flavor as it thaws and cooks. It's made right. Tastes like country sausage ought to taste. Keep Purnell's old folk sausage in your freezer, and you're ready for a treat many times. It's good. It's time for another Piccadilly People Profile. You try saying that three times fast with your mouth full of catfish. That's what Sally Sanders comes for twice a week. Plus, whatever else catches her eye on our 50-foot spread of hot, wholesome, home-style cooking. This time, it's the cherry pie. And the chocolate cake? Oh, well. There's always room on the tray for one more. Or two. Piccadilly Cafeteria. Who says you can't please everybody? You did. You're right. Back at Rupp Arena, where Kentucky whips Carolina 74-40. to Two of the stars, Kentucky seniors Wayne Turner and Scott Padgett. They're with Larry. Okay, Tom, thanks a lot. Wayne, uh, obviously you had this big week off. Did it help you having that week? And what did you do this week to get ready for South Carolina? Well, I think, um, you know, we, we took a couple of uh, days off after, after the um, Alabama loss and, you know, gave some, some guys a chance to, um, you know, think about uh, getting better and, and thinking about, um, you know, what we're going to do to prepare for the next game and, and, and focus on getting better and practice every day. And, I think guys came to practice uh, this week and really focused in and played hard and got after each other. And it just carried over to this game. And it goes to show if we work you know, harder and harder and practice every day and make each other better, um, good results to show. Okay, Wayne, let me visit with Scott for just a moment. Thanks for coming out. Scott, good all-around game today. Tell me about this basketball team, not only today, the defensive work, but also what you've got coming up for the next couple of games. I mean, this is something that you've got to be thinking about. Definitely, we got some uh, tough games coming up. We're going to be, you know, we have Georgia coming up, and then we have Arkansas on the road. We're going to finish up with Tennessee. So we got some tough games ahead of us. Uh, you know, what we need to do is just like Wayne said, we got to get in the gym and work harder and harder every day in practice. And, and if we do that, this team will get better and better. And, and it's sort of a lot like, you know, last year's team, where, you know, at this point, we needed, we had some things we needed to work on. We get in the gym and work on them, and, and things can turn around. Tough week for you this week, having coming off two losses. Well, I think it was tough because you wanted to get back out there and play a game and, and show people that you can <laughs> you can still play a little basketball. But, uh, you know, we got in and, and really worked hard in practice, and was, practice was very competitive between the two teams, and, and we got to get, a, get back in and get a win. Okay, Scott, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Tom, obviously uh, Scott Padgett didn't have a problem today. He got everything done out there on that floor. He did indeed a great all-around game, and he is our BP best player from Kentucky. B.J. Mackey, of course, from South Carolina, had 13 points. Padgett with 13 Leading five Kentucky players in double figures. Also had three assists, a pretty good number of rebounds, and some good defensive plays as well. Six rebounds total. Final from uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas wins by 20 over Mississippi State. Big feature of the game today for the victorious Wildcats, though, was their defense. They held South Carolina to 25% shooting, 19% in the second half. Meanwhile, Kentucky hit 31 of 62 shots, 50%. That included a season-high 28 three-point attempts. They connected on only seven of those 28 attempts for 25%. Kentucky wins its 20th game of the season for the ninth consecutive year. They're now 20 and six, and overall, their 44th 20-win season. South Carolina drops to seven and 17. So, Tom Hammond for Larry Conley saying so long from Rupp Arena. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of SEC basketball. The impeachment trial is finally over, and Wave 3 News is the only station to bring you live local coverage of this historic event. Tony Hyatt is there live. Kentucky and Indiana senators voted along the lines of the party. Reasonable men and women can and do disagree. Live, local, historic coverage. That's what makes Wave 3 News Wave Country's news leader. From eastern to western Kentucky, from the banks of the Ohio to the Kentucky-Tennessee border, in the city or in the country, Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance is there to serve you. 
For property, vehicle, life, health, or even business insurance, Farm Bureau has the right policy at the right price. Enjoy the peace of mind thousands of Kentuckians have for over 50 years with the largest property and casualty company based in Kentucky. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, all around coverage, all around Kentucky. Meet me where it always feels like summertime The swing on Wilson's Pond or old Mahoney sign The good times that you're craving are just around the bend It's time for a meal Meet me at the Dairy Queen Where the feeling never ends Meet me at DQ Come in and get a chicken strip basket with fries and Texas toast It's only $3.49 Come on to that feeling And meet me at DQ after the Wildcats take on Georgia, stay with Wave 3 News for a special look at how UK's Travis Ford is passing on his basketball legacy. Wednesday at 11 on Wave 3 News. If you see news in the making, take action. Call the Wave 3 Newsroom at 561-4150. Or Bell South Mobility customers can dial star Wave 3. This is Wave 3, Kentucky's first television station. Tonight at 6 o'clock, fire sweeps through a warehouse in southern Jefferson County, filling the sky with smoke. Also on Wave 3 News, love is in full bloom, and the rush is on to find the perfect gift for Valentine's Day. But first, a high-speed chase across state lines to downtown Louisville. Good evening, I'm Craig Hoffman. Thanks for being with us. A high-speed car chase through downtown Louisville ends with one man facing charges of auto theft and attempted murder. The chase, which lasted nearly 30 minutes and started across the river in New Albany, is tonight's top story. Way 3 News reporter Camille Whitworth has been following the story. She joins us now live from police headquarters in downtown Louisville. Camille. Good evening, Craig. If you were downtown today, you may have seen the chase. The, the, a man was driving a stolen car in circles around town today. In fact, at times he was seen driving the wrong way down one-way streets, apparently trying to lose police. The scene today, very dangerous. Speeds were very high and shots were fired. It was 18-year-old Raul Garvito that led dozens of officers on a high-speed chase. It started in New Albany, Indiana, when an off-duty police officer noticed a stolen car cruising the area. We attempted to stop him in New Albany. He failed to stop. Uh, first thing he did was head straight for the bridge, came across the river. That's when the pursuit heated and speeded up. The black Buick Century hit speeds of 90 miles per hour coming into Louisville on Interstate 64, but once downtown, speeds made maintained at 70 miles an hour. Like a real life cops TV. He opened fire in the car, car kept going. So by that time, it was approximately uh, 20 police cars following this guy. And he looted them all through this whole area. The area of the Clarksdale neighborhood. Made about three passes through here before he finally stopped the car. And bailed out. And bailed out. Mm -hmm. Witnesses saw police firing shots when Garavito tried to run an officer over. And there was a cop stopped here and uh, opened fire on the car coming down the uh down this um, Muhammad Ali Boulevard. The chase ended here. 22 minutes later, Garavito stopped the car and tried to escape on foot, but he was caught and is now in police custody in Louisville, facing auto theft charges on both sides of the bridge and attempted murder of a police officer. Now, Garavito is also facing other related charges like traffic violations and resisting law enforcement. Craig, just a side note, no one luckily was injured in today's hot pursuit. Back to you. Certainly some good news there. No one was hurt. Uh, in this particular case here, Camille, uh, what about the car itself? Did it, where did it come from? Do we know? We have no, well, it came from an apartment complex in New Albany. Um, it wasn't that damaged, though. The window was found broken out. One of the back windows was broken out, but when the car stopped and Gar Garavito fled. It wasn't that injured, so they've towed it away and it's uh, in custody right now. All right, thank you, Camille. We're with live tonight at Louisville Police Headquarters. Thank you, Camille. The winter weather did cause some problems on the roadways this morning. Several accidents on Interstate 65 near Elizabethtown slow traffic down to near standstill at times, but that cleared up by 11 o'clock this morning. A chilly day to be outside, but firefighters have no other choice if they're called into action. It happened today as thick black smoke poured into the sky over one Oklahoma business. This is kind of one of those fires that was gone before we even got to call. 
So we're just kind of surrounding and drowning it right now. Okalona's fire chief describes conditions as his crews arrive. About 11 a.m., acoustical and drywall supply on Preston Highway catches fire. Workers at nearby businesses see flames and thick smoke. They call 911. Kenneth Hayes feared someone may have been inside. I immediately tried to get in the store over here, and uh, there wasn't, it was locked. I looked in, didn't see nobody in there, and we stepped back away from the fence, or back toward the fence. As we got back here to the fence, we was hearing some booms out back. Those booms are actually explosions inside the business. Chief Rich Carlson determines it's either truck tires or propane gas. It's LP gas cylinders which are blowing up. It's just a real, you know, rapid fire boom. Fortunately, no employees are inside. Eventually, a half dozen fire departments help out. Cold temperatures make things slick and even puts a light ice coating on fire helmets. Chief Carlson isn't sure how it starts, but isn't ruling out trucks parked inside earlier in the morning. Company workers like James Kennel can only watch. And mainly it's all it is, is drywall and ceiling tiles and stuff like that. Insulation is the only thing we carry. It's, and it's gone. Oklahoma fire crews are still on the scene of that fire, knocking down some hot spots. We're also told that LG and crews are out there off Preston Highway on Oak Lawn. They're trying to restore power to a handful of businesses in that area. An update on the story tonight at 11 o'clock. Dorm fees are going up at Murray State University after a deadly fire there back in September. One student was killed and another severely hurt in the blaze at Hester Hall. The increased fees will be used to pay for putting in not only sprinklers, but we're also told security cameras and upgraded fire alarms. A message is going out today hoping to change the way animal rights are handled. Members of PETA are asking folks not to fish. The demonstration is outside of the hunting and fishing show at the Commonwealth Convention Center downtown. There really is no 